So Burnley, tell me how the move came about. What was the build up to it and how it all was going? Well, last summer I was got in trial with Ipswich and went in for a week and it was a good club, like a good family club, but obviously things didn't work out and then I just went in trial with uh, Oldham at Christmas there and uh, I think it was the Wednesday the academy manager just called me and he says look we're going to offer you a contract and I says flip this is brilliant first contract and then went home talked to dad and he says look Oldham would be a good club to go to league two probably uh, third choice left back for the first team I says to myself brilliant and then a week later I uh, got a call from Burnley going a week's trial Went in the week's trial, did training, played a match against Barnsley in the quarter final of the Clarks Cup. Brilliant, 1 2 1. And then I was actually sitting in the airport on the Friday going home and I got a call from my mum. She says, Burnley's going to offer you a deal, a two year scholarship. I says, well, This is the best news I've ever heard. That's my dreams come true, like professional or professional footballer or professional club. And I says, Oh, this is what I want, you know. Burnley being in the Premier League is obviously a big draw as well, and they've just got their category one. Yeah, the it's done. absolutely fantastic. Like, and they're actually pushing for Europa League place as well, which is brilliant. So, but they're they're a brilliant club. Like their facilities are absolutely fantastic. Uh, their facilities cost about in the region of four million. Like, so when we were there, we were just blown out of the water by the facilities. Yeah, and did the family go over? Yeah, me, my mum and dad went over and the first day we just arrived and we were we were we were like wow this is this is where I wanna be. Have the coaches told you then what they expect of you when you when you do go over? Uh, yeah, well they've they're setting targets for us and we're setting targets for ourselves. But they want us they want us to improve in every way possible. They want us to prove as a person and as a player. Yeah. Because they want the best for us. If it doesn't work out at Burnley they've got They've got plans in place, and they they know what to do to to, to strive to do that. Yeah. The size of the club. Th- tell me what 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 was it like being there. Did you train with the first team? Did you train with any of the, of the big guys? Or? Uh, well, actually, during during the time I was there uh, for the week, uh, the twenty threes had a few games. I think they had a game on the Saturday, they had a game on the Wednesday, and then they had a game on the Saturday again. So I was training with the eighteens, uh, but the quality of the sessions were fantastic like even though maybe the, t- the better players were away the the other players they were just they were just as good and when I go in here at the start of August like it's just gonna be it's gonna be completely new and I just can't wait to get started to be honest lockdown is almost over um, how has it been have you been in contact with the guys at Burnley over the whole thing have they been giving you things to do and sort of prepare yourself the whole way through lockdown from maybe well from maybe the start of June like uh, they've been uh, we've been on Zoom calls with each other and uh, and then our whole program it started at the start of July there and uh, our education as well so me or the lads and I are just we're starting to chat like and it's starting to and it's starting to feel like I actually am over there but I'm not but it's it's going to be completely different. How have you found yourself without having any real training or football? Have you been working hard at home? Or what have you been doing? It's, it's been hard, like, but I've, try- I've been trying to keep my motivation up. I've been trying to be uh, doing as much as I can five days a week, and then on a Saturday, obviously, try to replicate a good session. So, but it's been it's been hard, but I've got myself through it. Like. Yeah. Trying to hit the ground running there and start Yeah, running. definitely. We have to, like the pre-season, it's always going to be the hardest because you're coming in, you're doing, obviously you're going to be doing a lot of running to get your fitness up, but that's what you want, that's what, you, that's what you're there to do, you're there to work hard, you're there to train, so can't wait. What, what do they do when you go over there, do you, do you have digs to, to stay in, or do you have a family to stay with, or what's the plan? Uh, yeah, we were actually talking about that last week, so we were uh, on Zoom, uh, I'm going in with a family and two other fellas from the club that are my age, so it's perfect. Okay, talk about Portadown now. You've been here a wee while. Yeah, I've been here since the age of four, so I have. And uh, to be honest, playing for your hometown club is everybody's dream. Like playing for the first team is 
was probably one of the best moments of my career as well. But with my family being involved in the club for so long, my granda was involved in the club and my dad was involved in the club and probably their best or the best moments of the world. So it's it's been absolutely unbelievable. And starting at such a young age and then coming up through it's there's so much there's so many people that you see just around the club now that you've seen when you're younger and it makes it even better. Yeah. Being four years old, staying with the old town club the way up, are you you're really the the example then that other four year old, five year olds come out of the club, that's what they want to get to, they want to progress up the first team and get a move across the water. Does that give you some pride? Oh, to be honest, it does like because be being categorised in that type of class is just uh, very appreciative to be fair. Um, you talked about the McCullen name. Yeah. It's been it's well known not only in Portadown but in, in Irish League circles. Yeah. Does that name have you, have you find that hard to live in that shadow or have you have you really enjoyed having that sort of pressure on you? No, having the pressure on me, like my cousin is a professional footballer, Luke, and he's it just he it kind of like drives me on to want to become a professional but seeing my family strive maybe in the Irish League is it's just it's good for the family name and to keep the football in the blood is just is just what I want to do. Does the pressure from your your father and your grandfather is that do they, do they keep on you? Uh, my dad does my granddad's my granddad's quite laid back but my dad definitely does he's he wants. He just wants me to become a professional. Like he said, he says football is everything. Don't worry about other things. But that's what dads. Are, that's what dads are there for. What's the first year when you go over there? What's what's the plan? Adapt for the first way? Yes. Try to get a few games under my, my belt. Good few consistent games, and then maybe even push for uh, the youth cup team under the teens youth cup team, and then hopefully by the end of the season maybe get a few games for under twenty threes. And then after that, well, I obviously want to go for the professional contract, but that's it's very hard in the first year to get the professional contract. But I need to work hard when I go over there, and that's what I want to do. So, talk about um, making your league debut here for Portadown. You're the youngest, still the youngest player ever to play in the league for Portadown. Talk about how that became about. Last year, our, I was playing for the under 20s last year, and I got a good few games and Tippy is actually down on one of the games, one of the games for the under 18s at Brownstown, we were playing in the cup and that was probably the best game I've ever played and Tippy came into the changing room after the game and says, right, yeah, you're coming up with the first team tomorrow and I was against Carrick and then ever, again, or ever since then I was just, I've just been training with the first team and then the game against Ballamollard, I was on the bench and I said to myself, this is a big game here, I've no chance of getting on, then Tippy says, go out and do a run there, get sharp, he calls me back in and he says, right, get dressed there, you're coming on, it was, it was surreal, like, seeing all the fans in the background, it was, I says, I'm not making this debut, am I, but it's getting on the pitch and being there with the players, it was, it was just like I was playing for the under 20s, but it was brilliant. Like. Yeah. Do you notice that step up in speed of game? Yeah, big time. Like I want to, I want to dribble the ball, drive past players, but you can't do that. Then you have to, you have to pass and move. It's, it's completely different. Like the physicality and the speed of the players as well is completely different. Hi right, Trevor, um, Dean McCullough is making his move across the water then to Burnley. Yep. Give me a wee breakdown of, of uh, Dean as a player and a person. I think as a player, I think he's got some great attributes, especially his position. He, he plays, um, he's got a wand of a, of a left foot, which really helps. Um, he gets up and down the line very well, but I think he listens very well. And through his career, I can remember him being here from you know probably six, seven years old, the whole way up. And Dean wasn't the best player always in his group he wasn't but he's he's developed then over the years and and, and the player that he is now but and he's a great example for any any of these young kids that's training out the back here now and i think one of his his main attributes is you know his character and his attitude you know 
from the minute he's came in, and this this isn't even when he's training with us, he's just a model pro. You know, he's a model pro. He's he's an old head on young shoulders. He does everything. He listens really, really well, um, and he just wants to play football. He shows that when he's playing. He's he's got a great enjoyment, but he shows great character. You know, and and he's somebody when he's played in those matches that he's played in the first team. You never have any worries about him going in because he's got that character, drive, hunger, which a lot of our players have. But he he really shows that, you know. As you say, as a coming in as, as a young player like that, getting to sixteen and making him move across, that's really the example that you want to teach to all the young young players here. I think it is, and I think a lot of hard work's been done d- down the years with this. Um, and I think you know even even his dad Neil has been has been heavily involved in that and uh, and and Gary McCullough as well. Um, whereas this is something that's maybe started maybe eight, ten years ago, um, that we looked at it and we knew that we were going to have to produce our own players. And there's been a lot of hard work has been done by a, by a lot of coaches um, for that. But this is this is a great example. You know, for him to come six years old, whole way up, he's the youngest ever player to, to play for Portadown, which is great. And uh, now to get his his move across the water, you know, which he fully he fully deserves. You know. Into-